Master of Wine Tim Triptree is the International Director of Wine and Spirits at Christie's. At the start of Tim's career he worked in South America and during this time he became interested in wine so enrolled on a sommelier course. This led to Tim working at Majestic Wine in London until finally moving on to Christie's. The first sale at Christie's was in 1766 and the records show that the sale included fine claret and old Madeira and they have been selling wine ever since. Tim currently writes for the Rate magazine with a weekly column and continues to source wine from around the world. Tim, thank you very much for uh, welcoming us here to Christie's and being a part of the English Wine Collection's Wine Talks British Business. Could you start by filling me in on your career? Pick a, a moment to where wine came into your life to where we are today. Sure. Um, well, firstly, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming to Christie's and um, uh, doing this uh, podcast with me. Um, so wine um, is in fact a, a second career for me um, as um, after studying psychology uh, as my degree at Newcastle University I actually went to work in investment banking in the city. Um, so I worked for Dresden Climate at Steen, and then um, I took a career break which took me to South America and I lived in La Paz, Bolivia uh, for four months working as a journalist. Um, and then I went to Mendoza in Argentina and studied Spanish. Um, and it was while I was living in Mendoza that I became interested in wine, um, as I, I visited many wineries um, uh, surrounding the city. Um, and you know, the whole there's a huge buzz about wine in, in Mendoza. Mm. So, um, so while I was in Mendoza, I enrolled on a sommelier course um, at a, 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 a university there, um, and that kind of reinforced my desire to uh, work in the in the in the wine business so while i was there i was looking online trying to find out on uh, courses to do and to you know help me to move um and i found that the um royal agricultural uh, university in sirencester were offering an mba in wine business management right okay so i uh, you know applied for the course um i was accepted Moved back to the UK, uh, became a full-time student again, and uh, studied the MBA in wine business management. So uh, I did that uh, for about 18 months, uh, completed a, um, a dissertation, got a distinction in the MBA. Um, and so that really, um, you know, put on my CV and helped me um, uh, move from a career in banking to a career in wine. Um, so, um, so that was, uh, yeah, when I came back, uh, left, uh, the MDA, then I, uh, my first job in the wine trade was actually at Majestic Wine. Okay. So I worked, um, in, uh, their store in Vauxhall, um, and then, uh, Christie's, an opportunity arose at Christie's initially was, um, just a, a temporary contract as a junior specialist in the wine department at Christie's. Okay. And, uh, here I am almost 15 years later, still working in uh, Christie's wine department. It's a good job to, to get you on board with wine. Yes, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the, uh, it was a very brief moment, but you sort of working yeah. as a journalist. Can you, can yeah. you think of any memorable moments from that or? Um, I mean, it was, um, I mean, it's just a fascinating place to be, to be living actually in La Paz. So that was, it was kind of like, it was work experience. So it was a career break. It was a company that um, uh, does these career breaks. And, and so, so they kind of placed me um, working in, in uh, for the Bolivian Times, which is um, a very small uh, readership. Uh, the Bolivian um, Times. Yes, yeah, I think a readership of about less than 100 people. Um, but uh, it was more about the experience of living in of course, you know, yeah. um, a South American city. So, um, I mean, I, I yeah, I just um, wrote a few, you know, it was a, a weekly publication, so I didn't actually write that many articles, um, um, but certainly not related to wine, but it was more about sort of lifestyle um, uh, um, things in, in Bolivia. Um, uh, so, which has actually helped me in, in, you know, in terms of now I, I do write, um, you know, quite a lot about wine for the catalogues. I, I write a, a column for the Rake magazine and, and okay. on wine. So, so I think that kind of, you know, that experience of, of, of sort of journal, journalism has certainly helped in, in, in my wine career. Can you tell me a little bit more about you mentioning the lifestyle then of, of what it was like yeah. over there? Can you talk about yeah. that? Um, in, in La Paz specifically? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was, um, uh, I mean, you know, so it was a, quite a shock to the system, to be honest, um, okay. coming from, uh, you know, the UK to um, uh, living in, in uh, Bolivia. Um, you know, the, um, I mean, there's the um, uh, 
uh, I guess the cultural differences. Of I course, mean, yeah. you know, there's there's, a, um, uh, there's the um, the fact that Bolivia is uh, La Paz is so high in altitude, and so you know you don't really run around in in La Paz because of you know you're struggling to breathe. Um, um, but um, and yeah, it was just uh, fascinating. It really opened my eyes to to um, um, you know the world out there, and um, so I, I really did enjoy um, my time in, in La Paz. Um, um, but it was mainly actually, you know, living and then moving to Argentina, studying Spanish um, in Mendoza, which really, it, I guess it was a life changing experience for me. Because then, you know, I never thought when I first arrived in South America that I'd be, end up uh, working in the wine business. Did you find much of a difference between the two locations? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very different. I mean, um, I guess Bolivia was... Um, uh, a lot colder <laughs> um <laughs> just being at altitude it was yeah it's just uh, yeah very different it's uh, culturally i guess also there's um a huge um indigenous population in in um, bolivia which is more um kind of european in argentina so there's is there's that um cultural difference um um and obviously you know the wine well small wine business in bolivia but much larger wine business in argentina Continuing on from, or rather, with your career, uh, you've yeah. racked up an impressive qualifications within wine, including becoming a master of wine, which is which is a, a, a real achievement. What do you think led you into the auction world? I mean, you've touched on it briefly, but how did you get to where you are? Yeah. Um, so the auction world was um, uh, very appealing, as um, I wanted to work in in the fine wine sector. In fact, I. Um, when I left um, uh, Science Esther with my MBA, uh, um, I had applied for a job at uh, Berry Brothers. Uh, um, okay. Uh, so, um, which is ironically just around the corner from where we are at the moment. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I particularly wanted to work for a prestigious company such as as Christie's. Um, of course. So I was um, attracted by the international nature of the auction business um, and the opportunities to, to visit wine regions, to visit sale locations, to, um, to visit clients. We're a very global global company. Um, so that was um, what was appealing. Also, um, Michael Broadbent, MW, mm-hmm. having the opportunity to work with uh, such a legend in, in, the, in the fine wine um, uh, trade um, was a, a, an opportunity I can really pass up. So that was another plus about um, working at Christie's. Can you think of any particular advice he gave you or a memorable story at all? Um, goodness, there's uh, many. I'm sure it's a yeah, few. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a few um, hilarious stories. Uh, Michael was a great raconteur, so um, he came up with um, many great stories. Um, but I, I think, um, I, I mean, I he I bought his book um vintage wine which um um is is kind of a, um, a bible for us wine lovers um and um he um was a kind of inspiration for me to start the mw obviously he's a master of wine um and um he wrote a little uh, note in in um, um my copy of um, the book because i asked him to sign it and um it was very encouraging and said um you know one you know uh, um, one day you'll be in MW, which was kind of the inspiration that kept me going because it is a, a difficult um, exam process. So, of course. so that, that kind of was always a, an inspiration for me to carry on with my studies and persevere. And um, I um, yeah, succeeded in becoming Master of Wine in uh, 2018. When um, I was studying for the Master of Wine, uh, the final stage is to do a, um, a, a research paper. So um, I did it on champagne and the use of reserve wines in uh, brute non-vintage champagne. So my research was assessing trends um, and um, seeing um, whether um, producers had um, uh, changed the amount of reserve wines that they have um, in their brute non-vintage. Okay. Um, so it was to, to see the reasons behind the, uh, any changes um, and the implications of any changes. So what I discovered from um, uh, my research is that the amount of reserve wines has, has changed over a 20-year period. So I was looking from uh, 1995. Um, so it was an, on average 22.5% uh, reserve wines um, in brute non-vintage um, and 20 years later, that had increased to um, almost 34%. Okay. So quite a significant uh, yeah. change in the use of reserve wines. So uh, my research found that out and um, I discovered that um, um, there were a, a number of 
reasons for that. Um, uh, one was um, the appellation changes that have allowed producers to keep back reserve wines. Sure. Um, uh, another is, is related to um, the decrease in dosage. So as dosage levels have, have uh, decreased, then um, uh, that's related to the um, uh, reserve wines increasing. Um, because dosage was um, typically used to, to maybe mask the raw, uh, sort of um, really young wine. Um, so if you have less of the younger wine, then um, you know you don't need as much sugar to to to, to compensate for that. Um, so um, so yes, it was a fascinating um, uh, research, and I'm you know a massive fan of champagne. So to be yeah. able to to go over to Champagne and and, and meet uh, producers and I did in in depth interviews with some of the you know yeah you know, um, uh, uh, Jean Baptiste Lacayon from Louis Roderer and uh, mm. Julie Cavill from Krug uh, um, Bruno Payard um, uh, Hervé Dantin from Lansard. so you know it was um, yeah absolutely fascinating to to go over to Champagne and get really immersed in uh, in the region. Can you think of uh, any particular bottles that you yeah. had or stories sharing with these people, as you as you've mentioned? Yeah, well, I mean, um, I've been very lucky um, to um, to taste some fantastic um, um, champagne. So, um, um, so I, you know, so there's so many uh, amazing. I, you know, Lansana t- tasted amazing, 1979. Um, uh, uh, tasted blind actually. So, um, um, okay. and tried to guess. Uh, yeah. What, what vintage it was um how did you do yeah i did it not bad actually because i uh, yeah i i i think um yeah it was uh um i got it sort of around that ballpark area so um so that was that was great um it must uh, have been great to try those wines though. yeah yeah absolutely so yeah so yeah that was fantastic and um you know charles heidzik as well we um tasted some pretty you know some uh, superlative vintages so um so yes, I've been very lucky in in that respect. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, it must be a unique opportunity, really, to, to yeah. have such a, a, a be able to touch these wines, quite literally, to have them that, that aren't available normally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so very very fortunate. Your responsibilities include the Hong Kong Fine and Rare Wine Auctions, sourcing wine collections for buyers, etc. Can you think what's been your most memorable sale? Has that something yeah. come to mind? Um, so. Um, I, um, in terms of my role currently, I'm I'm sourcing business not just for Hong Kong but also sure. for um, uh, New York, Geneva, uh, London um, sales. So, um, so so my remit is is kind of in, um, you know international in that respect. Um, I lived in Hong Kong for four years um, from uh, 2013. Uh, to the end of uh, 2016. So um, during that time, I was um, uniquely focused on Hong Kong sales, um, and I was I, be- I was head of Hong Kong um, in 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 that period. And I mean, things that spring to mind: really memorable sales. Um, we sold the collection um, of Sir Alex Ferguson. Oh, so did you? Um, okay. yeah, so that uh, was uh, um, a fantastic experience to to be involved with that project. We we sold actually b- divided between Hong Kong and, and London. Um, was uh, it quite sorry, an easy sell? Like, uh, was the interest there because it was him or because of the wines? I think it was um, because of the wines predominantly. Good. I think um, yeah. because you know he had he uh, he certainly had a, a great collection. I mean he he was a um, you know obviously. A, um, amassed some some incredible Gromney Conti, um, uh, some fantastic um, Tuscan wines, um, uh, you know, so Bordeaux. So um, so yeah, it was the, the wines kind of you know sold them, you know, sold it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but obviously having you know Sir Alex Ferguson's name behind behind the collection was was also fantastic. So um, so that was that was great. Um, uh, we um, also sold some. Uh, um, wines direct from Massetto. Um, so um, people, I guess, when they think of Christie's, think predominantly of French wines. But you know, we sure. do sell wines from you know Italy. Um, is a particularly important area for us. So um, you know, the wines of Massetto. So we did um, a, a fantastic pre-sale dinner um, with um, uh, so Axel Heinz, um, the winemaker from Massetto, okay. um, uh, came over and um, we we drank some uh, fantastic Massetto. Um, back to 1997, um, which was was great. Um, so um, so there's so many highlights that uh, it's it's quite difficult to to sort of you know 
pick out um, a few. Um, um, but um, so um, I think it, talking about highlights from London, because um, obviously I'm in, involved in, in London sales. Mm. Um, so we uh, also sell uh, spirits. Um, so whiskey, we sold um, a bottle of Macallan 1926 for 1. 1.2 million pounds. Um, right. Which uh, was uh, incredible. Um, and in oh, sorry, was that a single bottle? One single bottle, yeah. That yeah. is incredible. Yeah. yeah. And um, in the lead up to that um, auction, we arranged a, um, a fantastic tasting. We had the master distiller from the Macallan came down. Oh, wow. And we, um, you know, the, opened a 1937 fine and rare Macallan. We had a 60 year old Macallan. We had a 50 year old Macallan. And uh, yeah, to taste these wines in the presence of the master distiller was um, yeah, very, very memorable. And did he talk much about them? Just enjoying, I mean, they're just yeah, really complex, um, fantastic uh, whiskies that we were tasting from the Macallan. So, um, so that was, um, yeah, I mean, and, but to have the input from the master distiller as well um, was just an added bonus, really. Yeah, I bet. I went to, um, I've got a lovely quote here from uh, Mr. Simon Tam, who's the head of wine sales in Hong Kong who's described uh, the wine area as the epicentre of the world. Delicious West meets Thirsty East. Why do you think this part of the world has become so important to wine? Yeah. Um, so Hong Kong uh, is a, a very important market for uh, the fine wine business. Uh, since 2008, um, uh, duty on wine um, has been was reduced to zero. Mm. So that has led to um, a, a, a boom in in um, wine businesses setting up. Um, the auction houses um, uh, um, went to Hong Kong. So um, so since two thousand and eight, um, Hong Kong has become the wine hub for Asia. Um, so it's a hugely important market for us. Um, so Christie's, um, uh, we um, uh, actually did wine sales in Hong Kong back in 99, 2000, 2001, and then we resumed again after the duty was uh, um, uh, brought down to zero. Um, so it's it's a very important market for us. There's um, a huge amount of um, enthusiasm, um, uh, great, um, uh, uh, both from new collectors, but also established collectors. Um, so it's um, a, just a very important market um, uh, for us. And um, um, I think, um, you know, we've had huge successes with our auctions there, um, and um, um, you know, it continues to be a, a, a vibrant market. Do you think they're buying the wines purely for investment, or is it for more for consumption? Um, I think, from my kind of experience, I guess I um, lived in Hong Kong for four years, and yeah. um, and I was delighted about um, how much wine was being um, consumed in, in Hong Kong. So actually, um, a lot of the wine is being bought for enjoyment. Um, so rather than investment, which is, uh, yeah, it's uh, great. Um, so um, I was uh, lucky enough when I was living there to um, to enjoy um, some fantastic bottles of uh, yeah incredible fine and rare wines. Do they feed back? Uh, much to you about it once once they they bought them and, and talked to you about the purchases. Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, 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 um, yeah and um, you know very generously, um, you know, uh, um, share um, quite often with with um, you know opening these rare bottles. So so absolutely, absolutely. That must be amazing having mm. to, you know being a part of the the, the sale and the transfer and to actually mm. um, have them share with you as well. That's yeah, brilliant. I was reading through the Christie's timeline, which goes way back to 1766, and I was just wondering, what information do you have about the wine that was available then, if there was any, or, or the early days for Christie's? Yeah, sure. Um, in James Christie's first sale, um, which um, was over 250 years ago, in, in the first sale in Pall Mall in uh, 1766 um, it included um, uh, fine claret and fine old Madeira in fact right. um, I do have um, a copy of the uh, auction uh, oh, wow. catalogue so um, so yes uh, so in that first sale um, it, it did include um, wines um, and um, we are um, delighted to, to be continuing that um, 
uh, today. So, um, can you um, um, read some of them out? Yeah, I mean, uh, so lot um, 30 um, was uh, three dozen of fine clarets, um, and lot 31 was uh, the same. Um, then lot 35 was three dozen of fine old Badira. So, right, um, okay. so they didn't have the specifics of exactly what well, it clarifications was. Clarifications as well. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but um, but they um, so um, people were buying uh, fine claret and fine old Madeira back in back in, in these days. And um, I mean, uh, we have an archives department here at Christie's um, in London, and um, we have the very f- the first the very first auctioneer's book, which is this is a kind of a reprint of, um, and every single auction book um subsequently here um so it's fascinating to be able to go and have a look through the archives and, of course yeah and, and see these things so um so yeah it's uh, yeah so What's anyway the condition that, like of, of the yeah the um the, the paper uh, and yeah um i mean it's you, you've got to be quite you know delicate. yeah <laughs> yes exactly yeah yeah but um i mean it, you, you know you, you you're welcome to have a look you can make an appointment and um wow you know, um, you. so um but this is a so you can have that as yes, a memento for you to take with you actually thank you yeah. so what uh, just just mm-hmm. just uh, uh, going on from that what does the paper feel like? I mean, have you had the opportunity to go through and is, how brittle it is? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I that's probably best. Um, uh, um, I mean, I'm not really touching these things, so um, good point. Yeah. Um, so um, so yeah, you just kind of look rather than go touch. Yeah, yeah, for the really yeah, yeah older. Well, that's great. So you've you've done yeah. a, a reprinting here of, of, with all of the details. Yeah, that's such a, a, a wonderful thing to have. A, mm. The living history always brings it part. Which, it's, it's very much in keeping within wine because it is, you know, it goes on its own journey within the transmission of the liquid within the bottle and from grapes. So mm. to have something um, of, to continue on with that is absolutely wonderful. So I just wanted to carry on um, with where Christie's is now and the, the you know, movement of Christie's as a company. And Christie's Live was introduced in 2006, which obviously opens up the bidding to, to everybody online. Can you... Uh, Talk to me how that's um, changed, how, how you guys operate here and the difference it's made. Yeah. Um, Christie's Live has has created new markets and new buyers. Um, uh, it's um, enabled us to engage with um, uh, new collectors um, across across the world um, in, in all our sale rooms. So, um, I mean, for example, 2019 uh, saw a significant increase in, in the number of lots sold via our online uh, bidding tool. Um, and increasingly, people are submitting um, bids uh, via the Christie's app. Um, so this uh, allows people to be on the move um, um, and also um, bidding. Um, so um, it's had a huge benefit. Um, and um, uh, it's, um, uh, it, I mean, Christie's live um, uh is a fantastic um, uh, tool for um, people to use. Where do you see is the the future for Christie's an extension of that? Or? Yes, I think it's. Um, uh, I think Christie's Live is is an integral part of our our, um, our business. But it's um, you know people um, don't know, you know can also come to the room. They can phone um, bid. Um, they can put in absentee bids. So I think it's just part of the the mix. Um, and um, certainly. Um, um, I mean, um, our kind of wine auctions and also we, we fall under the kind of luxury um, cluster um, and we um, are in particular um, uh, attracting um, new buyers. Um, so um, we, the luxury cluster does um, year on year attract um, the most new buyers to Christie's. Um, so, um, so I think, um, you know, having Christie's live is, is um, a, a huge um a benefit um, to reach these these new buyers, these more tech savvy. Um, and you know, that is across the the scope, as it were. You think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. all ages, men, women. It's really opened up the, the world for them. Yes. Them, yeah. Yeah. I think yes. Yeah. Obviously. Um, yeah. I think it. You know, particularly with um, um, you know the the sort of younger collectors. Um, I think. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Christie's life is... It's like an yeah. opportunity for them, isn't it, to, to yes. get there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if we look to the, the future now, what's mm. what are your plans? What are Christie's plans? Where uh, Where's it all going? Um, well, I mean, in terms of um, in sort of wine, um, I think um, we are um, seeing um, an interest in, in 
uh, wine regions, um, not just sort of the traditional kind of wine regions, but um, an increasing interest in, in say, the wines of, of Rioja, in the wines of um, Tuscany, um, the Rhone, um, as well as the, you know, established markets of, uh, you know, Bordeaux, uh, Burgundy, Champagne. Um, so I think we're seeing... Um, um, you know the fine wine kind of sector is 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 becoming um, increasingly um, uh, larger, um, but uh, Christie's will continue to to serve um, our ever growing collector base um, and and the needs of of our our, our clients worldwide um, by offering the the finest and the rarest um, wines. Um, spirits is another um, area that is um, I, I touched on um, and is an increasingly important part of the business. So, sure. so you know, um, whiskies and uh, um, and uh, um, um, even Maltai. Um, okay. uh, so um, we um, have had a huge success with uh, selling Maltai in our Shanghai sale room. Okay. Um, and in fact, last year our um, the third highest selling lot. Uh, from wine and spirits was in fact um, a lot of of Maotai, um, which was twelve bottles of uh, Fei Tian Maotai nineteen seventy seven that sold for over a hundred thousand pounds. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so I think we yeah we'll probably be seeing some more you know uh, increasing uh, um, uh, sales of uh, yeah Maotai. That's been brilliant, Tim. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to comment on before we wrap up? Um, I would just like to. Um, mentioned that uh, you know Christie's in in 2020 will be kicking off our, our wine sales um, in Hong Kong um, okay. on the 21st of March um, so that will be our our first sale we follow that up with a online sale in in New York um, that runs from the 27th of March to the 7th of April uh, in London our first sale will be on the 23rd of April um, and then we will have sales in Geneva um, and Hong Kong in in May so uh, yeah that's the, our plans for you know the first half of the year for 2020 so um uh, we um uh, hope to um uh, invite some of your listeners to participate in sure. uh, Christie's uh, wine really? and spirits auctions yeah absolutely because uh, yeah i just yeah it's a, it's a you know we we offer some fantastic um um uh, fine and rare wines and spirits and um um so i would uh certainly recommend to your listeners to, to you know have a look on our website and um and uh, look through and browse the catalogues and see uh, see what what wines and spirits take take their interest sure and, they can uh, discover and yeah. yeah absolutely yeah excellent well tim thank you so much my pleasure. pleasure thank you yeah absolutely my pleasure <laughs>